The life cycle of the Turner House in Pembroke has been a tumultuous one. Drivers by may know it as that large two-story home that sits on an otherwise vacant lot on the corner of routes 14 and 53. After being left for abandon, the Pembroke Historic District Commission was given a grant to do an emergency stabilization of the property. We spoke with the chair of the Pembroke Historical Commission, as well as the owner of the restoration company in charge of returning this once proud property to some of its former glory. This homestead was at one point in time the home of John Turner. He was a prominent uh, mill owner and he was uh, significant in the running of the town of Pembroke for many years. Um, he also was the chairman of the committee that wrote the Pembroke Resolves. It was the first time in anywhere in the American colonies that citizens put in writing a call to dissolve the Union with Great Britain. That was three years before Lexington and Concord. And I think that is very significant. Uh, very significant. And uh, some old histories refer to it as the little town of Pembroke and tell the story of the Pembroke Resolves. Most people have forgotten it. But the man responsible for that lived on this site. My connection to this property would be that my great-great-great-grandfather, Calvin Shepard, once owned both the mill and this property. Uh, when he sold, when he died, he left it to his two daughters, which is a rarity in those days. And one of the daughters married a West, and that's where the Wests come in. My grandfather would have been Jim West, who was the last person to have the mill in operation. And his father, Gilbert West, bought this place in 1900 and brought his bride here. And during that time was when this property really flourished and the mill flourished and it was really the heyday, or one of the main heydays of this property. When the mill closed in 1978, um, the, the property, this property and all the mill's property was liquidated. Uh, my parents bought this house in 1979 and moved back in and we restored it again. Um, in 1986, my father died of a heart attack here so the property had to be sold. And the people that we sold it to lost it to bankruptcy. And then the people that bought it at bankruptcy were, was the period when so much of the destruction, you know, the damage to the building had occurred. The Historic District Commission applied for a grant to do emergency stabilization here, which the grant was given. And this summer, my company started working here. The first step was to clean it out because you couldn't walk through these rooms. Um, we also had to clean out the exterior because the overgrowth of plants you couldn't approach, you could, really couldn't see the house. So everything was cleared out and then we did a lot of stabilization in the basement which we'll walk around and show you um, what was done and how it was done. Um, there were some interior repairs done, um, the kitchen hearth had been punched through to the basement which was you know, obviously a hazard to anyone that would be in here. Um, and there were other remedies taken. The upstairs floor had been completely taken up with no subfloor. So again, we wanted to put a floor down as an immediate safety item, things like that. The next phase is to, prob is to uh, continue the exterior restoration of the front facade, probably get a roof replacement, um, some more masonry repairs. Um, things like that. The ultimate goal of maybe a five-year span is to get this house back to a livable condition and then perhaps the town can decide where they want to go from it with the plan from there. The building itself has to have a purpose and while we have not determined precisely what that will be we do have options and we would like to make it not only a great historic site we want to make it viable, usable, and a building that contributes to the town of Pembroke. 